Welcome back, friends. Well, good news, we're in the wood shop today, and I've got a project I think you guys are really going to enjoy. Years ago, I saw an old Amish wood stove drying rack that was made so simple and such a great design, and it had eight fingers that spalled out. It folded really neatly against the wall, and it was made with just, just a few components. So I'm going to try to go off memory and recreate this for you guys. Now, if you have a table saw and a cordless drill, maybe a handsaw, you'll be able to build this for nothing more than just pennies. All you need is a one by six, about five foot long. There should be enough material to do that. I've got a 10 here, so I can make two. You're gonna need three hinges, a couple little guys here, and some inch and a half screws, about eight of these. So that's it. Let's uh, start cutting our main piece. It'll all come together, and uh, you guys can follow along and build one yourself, because this is gonna be a cool project. And you all probably guessed, of course, for me, I'm gonna be using Clear vertical grain Douglas fir, because that's just my way. <laughs> it's my, my favorite wood. Hard wood would be best if you have that. Uh, maple would be a good choice, hickory, anything like that. But goodness, I mean, if you had to, you could do this from just a two by six fir from the store or hemlock. These are your hinges. These guys are just small, so just get something similar to this. So right there, we got an inch and a half hinge there. And these screws, something that's gonna have a head on it, you'll need eight of these. When you head to the lumber store to pick up your material, Go ahead and get a 10 footer. That way you can do two of these. And trust me, after you see this, you're gonna wanna have two. You might want two for yourself, or it would make a really nice gift. Your first, first time your buddy comes over to see this, he's gonna ask you to make him one. You'll have it all ready for him. Make this guy a little bit more manageable. We're gonna have 12 pieces all together in this, and this will be the biggest piece. First piece we're gonna cut is gonna be 22 inches long by four inches wide. Now we'll just rip this on the table saw by three quarter. Make sure whatever wood you pick up, make sure it's clear vertical grain or doesn't have a bunch of knots in it, because that's gonna be a problem, because we're gonna have to have some strength in it. So clean, no knots. If it does have nice knots, make sure they're very tight, but no knots is better, best. Square your edge. Make sure your first cut now is going to be at that 22 inch mark. Be sure and save that piece of scrap that came off of that first cut here. We're going to cut this one 18 inches by three quarter by half. We've got two pieces done. We've got our base plate and then our support rod, which we'll trim, we'll customize that here in a minute. So our third piece and next piece is gonna be four inches by six inches. Now, because we're using one by six, remember, take your six inch this way, because you don't have enough this way. A one by six is not really a one by six. It's a inch and a half, or it's a half inch shy, shy right? So we'll cross cut this to six inches here. All right, so that four by six, that's our what? Our three, did I say there were 12 pieces? I think it comes down to 11. Now we're on the final stretch here. So this is what we have left over here from our six footer or five footer. And we're gonna uh, cut this at 25 and a half. 25 and a half is what I came up with. And then we're gonna rip these down to a whole bunch of small little arms that are three quarter by half by 25 and a half. So let me lay this out and then we'll go and rip these on the saw. 25 and a half, we say. We've got our final board cut to length. So we are gonna go three quarter exactly to the inside of the fence. Well, that didn't exactly work out to plan. Apparently you can't get eight 
out of a two by six or one by six, you can get six. So we'll go with that. That's the beautiful thing about carpentry. There aren't any rules. You make it up <laughs> as you go. I was scratching my head over this. I knew I figured this right where I could get eight out of that. Here's what I did wrong. Stupid mistake. So when I originally ripped these down to three quarter, I should have ripped them to half. What I ended up doing is have to, I had to cut twice for no reason. Had I ripped them to half, then I would have had my eight instead of six and half as many cuts. Don't do what I do. All right, now time for the assembly. We are ready to put our hinges on. Now we'll start with our main piece. This is a piece that's gonna go against the wall. And what I come down off of here? Off the top, just so you know. Oh, it looks like about three and a quarter or so. I don't know that's super critical, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and install our hinges. Now these are just little guys, just little tiny ones. You can find these at any hardware store. Looks like an inch and a half across there. You, you could go with one too, I guess, just, just as well. So let's put these guys on here. Make sure that they're flush. Now we're ready to drill some holes. We're gonna take our eight or six legs here <laughs> and we're gonna pre-drill these. Now the drill bit you're gonna use is, is an 1164th. It's gonna allow that, to, that screw this to hinge, kind of like be like a bearing on there. So came down here about three quarters or so. Let's grab a line. Now we'll have to carefully drill through the long end, through the, through the wide end, those holes right dead in the center. I'm gonna use a drill press for this. The reason I'm using a drill press is, if, is I want these, these holes to be straight down through here. That's pretty important. So I'll just kind of eyeball the center. Uh, you can drill these by, with a, just a cordless drill if you're careful. Now remember, you want these screws to be inch and a half and something with a pretty good head on it. If it doesn't, if you can't find those, I'll just put a washer on them. But uh, what, you, what you're going for is you want that hole to be drilled just about perfect so that it fits snug on the non-threaded portion of the screw, the shaft right there, right? So that's, because we don't want that to be w too small or wobbly or it's gonna make our, our, uh, our deal not very good. Your arm should look something like this here. So now we're gonna mount the top of the hinge, or the hinges here to the top. So now be sure when you're doing your hinges, of course the hinge part sticks out a little bit further than the, the top plate. So you always wanna hold them up a little bit so that you get a proper, um, you, you, these will sit flat on here, right? So I'm just hanging that up there on that tape measure. Now these are one inch in from each side, we know that. When you put these little screws in, it's really important when you're, if you look at the head of these things, you know, they have a taper on them, right? If you don't start the screw in the center of the hole on hinges, when you tighten it, it will pull your hinge out of alignment. So do take special care the best you can when you're starting these to, to get them started right in the center if possible. 
Now, if we did everything right, it should look something like this. You get, kind of get the idea here? So this, of course, is going to mount against the wall behind the wood stove and will store in the downward position like this. And then when you have uh, uh, socks and gloves and hats and things you want to dry, uh, then you'll be able to spread these out like this over top of the wood stove and hang your, uh, all your clothing items on there, like that, you can kind of see. All right, so now we need to finish up and go about uh, making the stay uh, using our last hinge. Our third and final hinge is gonna look like this guy, kind of a little gate hinge there. It's about two and a half by inch and three quarters or so. And we're going to, we're gonna center that right here. I already laid out for that. Got my screw started. I'm going to try not to crack this. These screws are so small, I don't know that it's necessary to pre-drill these little guys here, but I guess we'll find out here in a minute. This angle here turned out more than I thought it would be. Uh, I actually ended up cutting it about 20 degrees. So if we square this up now with our square, right? And where that comes in now, you can see that 20 degrees is just about Right. I'm going to pre-drill these 564s. It's a very small drill bit, but these are very small screws too, right? So it should be just enough to keep it from splitting. Don't go all the way through. Yeah, I think that'll work just fine. So these holes didn't quite line up since we flipped it. So I'll drill those. Oh, what did I tell you? Not to go through? Oh, I did it twice. All right, so it's my job to make the mistakes so you guys don't have to. <laughs> Learn from my uh, bad carpentry here. Now when we fold this down, Imagine this against the wall. Everything's going to sit flush or flat and not be held out like that. And then we can raise it up. And our prop stick will prop in the hole that we're about to drill the notch and we'll hold that up securely. Okay, let's lay out for our last bit here. Before we chisel our notch in, I've got a, this clamp down to the bench there making sure that I've got my 90 degrees. And then over here, now we can determine where this guy will go. I suppose a guy could do this a number of different ways. Uh, if you wanted to really do it simple, you could basically put a cleat on here. And this would go up and clear that. I think a cleaner way, better way to do it would be once we establish that 90 there, and then I've centered it from the left to the right right here, is why don't we just, uh, chisel a little pocket down there. This is three quarter wide. There's a three quarter inch Stanley Sweetheart chisel. Just follow that down there. Make a little mark right there. And now we should be able to just to chisel this guy out here a little bit, right? We got it just right, guys. So just, just uh, chisel a little pocket in there. So in its stowed position, it'll be down. It's nice and clean, and as you go up, simply line it up with the pocket. The weight of the, uh, the wood material on the top will hold it in there, 
and we are set. Now we're just down to two left, uh, two last things. Uh, we'll drill and countersink two holes uh, to mount it to the wall, and then we'll uh, see how it works. We are ready to mount our rack here. So height is gonna depend on how hot a stove you have, obviously. You don't wanna burn things. So a couple things you might wanna consider here. Uh, this being a soapstone stove, it doesn't get particularly hot. So I could probably mount it a little bit closer than I would. I just want it to be uh, well above and then that there's, it doesn't hit the handles or anything when I'm coming out. So let's, let's go right here. We're just going to use those same inch and a half screws that we used for the, for the uh, little rack pieces. Oh, I do have to say guys, it's a very, very handsome looking piece, isn't it? It looks aesthetically, it looks, <laughs> it looks, it looks kind of nice. Everything we want everything to be plumb done properly and then our second screw Should be able to lift these guys up here Now to use it What's wrong with that? This is going to be just perfect. I have um, every day we have a half dozen pair of wet gloves. You know, we got stuff laying all over. You know, they don't dry very good when they're on the ground. One side gets dry and the other doesn't. You know, now we can put our gloves on here, drape them over the top, coats or hats or whatever you want, handkerchief, the whole deal. It's, you know, it's not super strong. Uh, but strong enough for, for clothing. I, pr I probably wouldn't hang a big winter coat off of it or anything like that or boots on it, but for just small stuff, mittens and gloves and all that, and you can kind of redirect it around, that's gonna, be, that's gonna be the ticket for drying stuff. I'll probably just put stuff right on the top like that. But that is a great little drying rack. And what do we have into that? You know, you probably have a one by six laying around the house. You could essentially make this out of pallet wood uh, if you, just busted off some pieces. Just make sure on these uprights that they don't have knots in them. You want them to be as strong as possible. But uh, a great little project that you could do for just really pennies, if not just a couple dollars. But that turned out really good. That's uh, that might be my go-to Christmas gift for uh, make up a half a dozen or so of these, and uh, that'd be a nice thing to give away. I might make one or another one right here when I turn off the camera and go put it on the inside of the house. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you guys on the next video.